All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. I appreciate it. My name is Ben Murphy. I'm the Global Director of Product Integration at Lakeside Software. And today I'm going to walk through Windows Virtual Desktop and how to plan for a successful deployment. Now, there are some key pieces that we'll walk through. Uh, this, again, will focus a little bit more on the process and kind of our best practices and how you can implement a successful virtualization environment in Azure. The big piece of our overall method is trying to understand and quantify the kind of complex ecosystem in which most users currently exist. So in almost every environment, you've got users that use probably a series of devices for productivity. They probably use a number of different distinct services, SaaS apps. You probably have on-premises VDI, maybe some other cloud-based workloads or published applications. All of those things come together to enable employees to be productive. So the first thing that we have to do is understand the criteria that they think are important for productivity, how you can make users productive with applications, and quantify exactly what kind of experience they get with all of those applications. So our stuff works around the idea of collecting data on all of the user activities on all of these devices that they interact with. Gartner represents this as the privileged vantage point. And what that means is that the interesting business of productivity takes place where the user is actually productive, namely an endpoint, a laptop, virtual machine, someplace where some computing workload is taking place. So our product, SysTrack, collects data on application characteristics, user usage, resource consumption, basically everything that's important to, to understand how the device is functioning and how you can continue to deliver a good quality user experience with it. The key for us is each of these individual facets comes in handy for some particular function for particular users. Like let's take peripheral devices. You have to have a discovery exercise to understand are people using things that require a connection to the actual terminal that they're interacting with? What kind of work style do people have? Are they mobile users? Are they users who may have to have disconnected analysis, meaning they would have a, a laptop that they take off of a network? Each of these pieces tells us something about whether or not Windows Virtual Desktop would even work as a solution for a user. And if so, the most important part, how do I size it such that they actually get a good, high quality user experience? Broadly, there are a few categories of questions that most people have in conjunction with a migration like this. And the really big ones all involve starting with building a baseline of understanding of an environment. So just what exactly do I have? Well, mechanically, it's important for us to understand a few things because, as an example, the Windows Virtual Desktop platform extends support for Windows 7 for an additional three years. That means this is a good opportunity for organizations that have to maintain Windows 7 for application compatibility purposes to parlay that extended support cost into, instead, an Azure-based deployment for a Windows virtual machine. So cost-saving opportunity there. But the question is, do you actually need to maintain Windows 7? That's an even more fundamental question that we can help answer by illustrating how do people actually use Windows 7 in the current environment? Are they actually using applications that would require them to maintain a Windows 7 environment or not? That's kind of the key here, is understanding usage and understanding context. So answering the question, what do we have, allows us now to start asking the next question, how can I move what I have in my environment. This is where resource planning and understanding how users are actively using their devices right now becomes important. So the key is to be able to find what kind of a virtual machine should I use to support this workload in WVD, because there's a pretty robust number, and it has massive cost ramifications as well. The other thing is to try and understand whether the users in your environment could benefit from a multi-user Windows 10 experience. So if for example, I have a large number of users who have the right resource characteristics, the right application behaviors. I can ultimately save a significant amount by increasing the density of users on a single virtual machine. So finally, this is, in my opinion, the most important part of the whole process, is validation. So how is it that I understand that the user experience that this user gets is equal to or better than the experience they got previously? So the Gartner terminology for this is digital experience monitoring. The basic idea is it's important to have some kind of a quantifiable mechanism to, to 
point out whether or not users are capable of being productive. So natively within our platform, we have a component that does that. But the idea here is that that diagnostic ability and that analytical ability to be able to very quickly say, are my users being productive? And if not, what's causing the problem is an incredibly key piece of the value of what we provide. So I'm going to take the bold choice to uh, do a live demo. So that's uh, fingers crossed that we don't get any uh, demons. But uh, the basic idea is we provide a free Windows Virtual Desktop Assessment. So you can go and register today, single sign-on with Azure Active Directory, very easy to use and do. It allows you to get started by collecting data with our cloud. So there's no net setup, there's no any additional infrastructure that you have to set up. You just deploy an agent to endpoints and you can get started collecting data today. So the question, of course, is what does that data look like? You can kind of see here that what we're seeing broadly is criteria for user experience. So we, we categorize user experience based off of how productive users can be with the technology they're working with, categorize the performance into excellent, good, fair, poor, and break out where there are issues. I'm going to focus, though, specifically on one topic, which is the idea of the cultivation of a persona. So personas are something that we natively generate. This allows you to have a pretty thorough understanding of how people are productive in your environment. So you'll notice there are a pretty robust number of personas in our own organization, so this is just a sample set. But the idea is many different types of workloads take place in any given environment. One thing to note in terms of an application transformation, a lot of personas only have a handful of applications that are very critical for them. Those are the kind of key pieces of the portfolio those are things that you want to port with you into Windows, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. So the final piece of this that I'm going to talk about in, in this segment is the integration that we have with Azure Migrate. So many of you may be familiar with Azure Migrate as a method of lifting and shifting workloads for server-based uh, workloads. So that would include IIS, SQL Server, that kind of thing. Uh, we have launched an uh, end user experience and end user computing based workload uh, analysis with Microsoft to, to make it easier to uncover how can I successfully deploy Windows Virtual Desktop for these users. So you'll notice some key criteria here. There are a handful of things that are very important to understand in an easy and straightforward way. One is what, did, what do we recommend in terms of a target size for a virtual machine? Another, what geographical location do we advise that to be present in based off of the location of the user? So those two facets alone are a pretty important aspect of making sure that you can give a good, high-quality experience to users because co-locating them with an Azure data center that's, low, that's close to them can make a really big difference in the overall user experience, especially now that Microsoft is starting to open WVD up to more data centers across the world. So now... Get back into that. So that worked. Very relieved about that. Uh, the next piece of this, though, I'm going to focus on a little bit, which is the idea of how do I now transform an environment and demonstrate success in that transformation. So the key for me is having metrology in place that lets you understand what the user experience is like and what that user experience is like over time. So for us, that's a user experience score. It's an indicative metric that's made up of a broad series of KPIs. It's a proprietary calculation that we provide that gives you a very good level of insight into how well an environment functions. The key is all of IT really is designed and predicated on the idea of, of productive, successful users. So all IT solutions ultimately are designed to enable users to be a productive member of whatever it is that the organization has them uh, doing. So the idea is we need to be able to articulate some type of impact from devices or applications that don't function the way that we anticipate that they should. That's where this comes in, and that's why it's such a key part of it, because understanding this model, we know that there are different pieces of this stack that can cause issues or performance problems for clients. So, it's important for us to be able to kind of cover holistically the full stack of what you've got to work with here. And I'll start at the beginning and work my way through. 
So on the client device end, and of course because WVD supports a robust system of, uh, ecosystem of different devices to consume it, it's important to understand how the device itself functions. So being able to know, for example, if that remote client device is on a poor wireless network that uh, a client is getting disconnected because of that or because of compute resource limitations on the device, that's a critical thing to understand. The next piece of it is where there are some pretty big changes in terms of how companies traditionally think about VDI. That's here in this brokering layer, the real kind of guts, if you will, of Windows Virtual Desktop, the idea that now Microsoft is essentially giving you something of a black box that is handling a lot of the complex operations that you would normally have to set up your own infrastructure for. This piece is where we've invested a lot of effort in having a diagnostic feed that augments that user experience score and gives you visibility into what's happening within that stack. So if a, if a customer or client or end user ends up having a problem connecting into a virtual machine, being able to give you a very clear cut indicative guide on what the source of that problem is in the middle stack. So that's a critical piece of this as well. And the final aspect, of course, is equally interesting. This is the actual virtual machine workloads themselves. So instrumenting this and having an idea of how those devices function is key because if you are having connectivity problems or if you are having general performance issues, you have to understand things like provisioning, do I have enough compute resource, memory, I.O. throughput, all of those things can cause limiting factors in the devices themselves and ultimately cascade into a poorer user experience for uh, end users. So the net of this is there are a couple of key pieces to be able to really successfully transform an environment and make sure that you can use Windows Virtual Desktop like you'd expect. The biggest one, and this is the thing that I think is very critical to getting started is assess an environment, understand what's in it, understand how the users are productive in it so that you can maintain that productivity. It also gives you a benchmark for success because you start with this is what the user experience was when I first started this journey. Now, after I've executed on Windows Virtual Desktop, I have the opportunity to demonstrate that I'm giving them a better user experience. We also have a free assessment offering that I would encourage everyone to check out. Again, wvd.lakesidesoftware.com, or if you stop by the booth, we can give you some more details about uh, this particular offering. But the idea is, through this, you not only get the right sizing, so you get our recommendation for sizing and user density on multi-user Windows 10, you also get that integration with the Azure Migrate portal, which allows you to pull data in and manage it in your own style uh, via that tool. So that is the net of what I've got. I uh, wanted to make sure that I leave time for any open questions or anything in general. All right. Uh, please evaluate, and uh, I'll be up here to answer questions if people want to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, everyone.